when you're going 80 mile an hour down an alley that's got <laughs> potholes and you frag your oil pan in a BMW, it was her BMW. It was not good. So oh, what you're saying courage. is what you're saying is you have a bad track record, record with your wife's cars. What he's saying is he's smart enough to do things in his wife's car, car or Jeep, <laughs> not his own. <laughs> All right, yo, Jeeper, we're going to do something a little different uh, tonight. Uh, this is uh, this was recorded on February 14th, Valentine's Day, and uh, we're just going to have a, a nice little chat with our uh, Zoom members. Uh, no specific questions, just what's going on, and uh, there may be some inside baseball here, as we like to say, but uh, sit back and get ready and enjoy. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Chuck, Wendy, Josh, and Tony. So we have the uh, the roundtable. We record the roundtable every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Time. And uh, then we publish that on the next day, Wednesday, usually before 9 a.m. So let's uh, let's bring in the Zoom people already chatting. It's always easier when you get right there. Well, the, the problem that I have with it is that in order to test it, we're going to have to cut the factory shock mount off. And yeah. once you've done that, you know you're kind of you're stuck right there until you figure it out, right? So. You know, you can always you can always weld the factory mount back on. I mean, yeah. and, and for you, I mean, you went and got those shocks that are longer, anyways, for the four and a half inch. So, I mean, if, I would think that you should be able to easily cut that off and um, move your mount and not even affect anything. No, I'm not worried about affecting anything. I'm just worried about the the actually doing it, but. Even if I'd have had the three, the regular shock length or whatever we're talking about, the problem isn't the extension of the shock. The problem is the damn shock body is so freaking huge with this two and a half that there's clearance problem. Why well, not just like uh, figure out a way to get it so it's contorted into the right way so that the body. Yep, that's the plan. The How's it going, it guys? Where you, where you need to be. Yep, that's the plan. Hey, Tony. Get your uh, Valentine's Day. Like there's no any pressure behind it. So uh, Valentine's Day and anniversary. Oh, uh, so I'm Valentine's, and then tomorrow's wife's birthday. So, <laughs> oh, I would I would tell her to pick one or the other. That's just too close together. That's like uh, <laughs> that's like being co- boring close to Christmas. I think you do you right. do know you do remember she's the one that called me at camp. Or whatever, she so. just loves you, John. It just means she loves you because I know what she's going to do without you. All uh, all up until she's sure she what she can do without you, then uh, then it'll be uh, need, just like like a band aid right need off. Keep, <laughs> you need to keep yeah. greasing that wheel because you're going to be going to that well for that new axle soon. Uh, <laughs> well, the Hemi that, that's going to be uh, that's going to have to grease a lot of the wheels. So I figured we'd just have a little chat, you know, kind of like you guys do on uh, on Thursday night. I, and I, I bet you there's a few people listening to the show that don't know about Thursday night, uh, where you guys get on uh, while we record uh, the flagship episode. Yeah, we get on here and, uh, you know, talk talk shit about the host sometimes, you know. Well, of Not, course. No, 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 mainly Chuck. Man, that, we just basically, <laughs> we all join here. It's the the team, the team talk shit about Chuck Club. Yeah. Meeting. Team Chuck. Yeah, so... Chuck, our uh, our uh, newest and fourth uh, co-host for the uh, for the new listeners. <laughs> hey, Tony, I was uh, listening to one of your episodes of your, your, or the one where you're talking about the tire lights and you put them on. Do you have the uh, Do you have the eight point four inch radio, or do you have a uh, smaller one? Say that again. The you were talking about using the aux buttons on your Gladiator for right. your lights, right? And I was just curious, do you have the uh, the 8.4 inch radio or do you have... Oh, the radio, one? radio. That's the thing I didn't hear. Yeah, I absolutely do have the 8.4 inch do radio. You, do you know you can go into the radio and uh, uh, set up those aux switches so that they can... You can have it so that they're either on when the vehicle... It comes on with the vehicle or they stay on. Or you can make it so they're momentary or latching. I do. I have uh, all four of them. Oh, okay. All four of them set up to only come on. Whenever uh, the uh, vehicle's running, and to turn off when the uh, vehicle turns off, that way I don't oh, get, was, I don't get calls from the wife asking why these lights are on. When you were talking about it on the show, it sounded like you didn't you, you might not have known about that because you were talking about whether or not they were they had relays or not. 
I'm sure they've got relays. They may be electronic. Yeah, they yeah, do. Relays. They're up on the they're up on the up on the uh, inside of the fender on the faster side. Are they uh, I, are wife, they physical my, my relays wife, or are they electronic yeah, relays? They're physical relays. Well, when my I say wife, physical, I mean the ones that are it. mechanical where they switch on and off. Yes. Yeah, they're mechanical. Yeah, my they, my wife's uh, JL didn't didn't come with those buttons, so I had to I bought them separately and installed them, and I installed them per the factories instructions and yeah the they're I, I believe they were the relays were just bolted if i remember right they were just bolted onto the inside of the fender well there or mm-hmm. inside of the <laughs> under the hood on the passenger side yeah so, there's a mechanical relays and then there's a fuse for each one so it's kind of nice mm-hmm. you know when you're adding stuff yeah i went ahead and fused everything uh okay. when i when i hooked up to it uh double fusing doesn't hurt anything but right I didn't feel comfortable just wiring it straight in there because, you know, when you first start wiring stuff on your vehicle, when you're like 16, that's how you wire everything. And, okay. and there are no relays. It's, it all goes to a big fat switch under the dash. Right. <laughs> well, you know, and you know that there's, uh, there's power wires for all four of those switches under the da- or under the passenger glove box and under the hood. Yep. Yep, there's two. two yeah, there's two there. sets. Two sets, is, yeah. Which is nice, because then you don't have to yeah, like, go through the firewall. Yeah, if you got inside lights that you want to put on one of those switches, you just use the wire on the inside if you want to be outside to use those. The, the uh, factory one, there's actually another, I think there's another, there's two extra wires for one that's tied to the ignition, and then I think one that's tied just to the, the battery itself, if I recall. Well, I don't so, remember that. Yeah. Talking of wiring stuff up. I ordered a set of the Cyclone V2 amber ones. Yeah, those to are great. put on the hinges of the hard top on the TJ and wire them up for chase lights. Yeah. So I ordered them, uh, and they arrived today. And I walked right out. The Amazon guy pulled in the driveway, and he was up on the steps by the time I got out there. Grabbed the package, all excited. I come in the garage, I rip it open, and I got a seven dollar weekly pill planning uh, container for somebody with arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> so I double check. I'm like, I didn't order that. So I look up the shipping. That's my lights. So I go on to Amazon. And of course, Amazon's customer contact is down. And it doesn't give you an option of the wrong thing arrived on the app. Like, it's not matching the description or something, but not just the wrong damn thing. So I finally get the customer service chat and he's like, Oh, well, well, you know what? What do you mean? It's the wrong thing. I'm like, you sent me this item. <laughs> it's, it's not what like, I, I wanted. <laughs> and gave it to him. And I'm like, I ordered $60 worth of lights and you sent me a $7 bill container. <clears throat> so I, they they're like oh well you know return it and then we'll refund your money oh, I'm like, i work the next three days you send somebody to pick it up he's like oh that's not an option i'm like i'm not going to the ups store because you f this shit up you guys fix it ups guy can pick it up they've done it before and finally he's like well i can do a returnless refund and you just keep the item that arrived there you go i'm like i don't need a pill container not for like hopefully another 30 fucking years but so the up the fedex or the amazon dude who dropped off the package all of a sudden i hear somebody in the driveway so i go back out and he's like hey i found this other package in my van did you guys cancel an order i'm like no he goes well this one has multiple stickers on it it's been declined a couple of times and rerouted I'm like, well, I guess. I'm like, what else did I order? I rip it open. Here's the Cyclone lights. <laughs> so now <laughs> Amazon has John's another problem. Yeah, well, here's sure. another problem. Amazon can't charge me for the lights now that they've been refunded without shipping me new lights. So you're going to get to like, time to order more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you guys are. Hey, they make great rock lights, uh, Bob. I can tell you, I'm 
I run them. The rock bikes. But I, I saw that trick you're talking about on the hardtop. I think Trail Recon had that on his. Yeah, he did, and then I've seen a couple other people do it on JKs and JLs. But I think I can do it on the TJ because it's got the plastic cover on the hinge, too. So. They make a, um, I don't know if they work with a TJ, but there's a bracket. I don't know. I'd have to look and see what the company is. But on my JK, I, I, I literally took that hinge cover off and the, the screws that are underneath it. And there's a company that makes a bracket that mounts underneath those two screws. And it uh, sits above the hardtop. It, like, follows the contour of the hardtop and puts the light right above the roof line. Does it affect it at all when you open it? Nope. Hmm. No, it, uh, it, it, they, they do. Uh, I can, I'll see if I can find it. I, I know I ordered it yeah. on Amazon, so if I can find it, I'll send it to you. Um, they do touch, like, where when, when the window's all the way up, the plastic from the hinge does touch the bracket. I just stuck a piece of black tape in where they where they touched so that way it wasn't scuffing it. But I mean, it, it was it wasn't hindering it in any way. So I've always found it kind of funny how I mean, when you look at big tires and lifts and everything else for Jeeps, you all kind of go hand in hand. But the, the obsession or fascination with lights that so many Jeepers have is <laughs> it's, it's funny to me. I mean, you'll see even around here, it's just like. If you don't have a light bar on it, it looks kind of naked or something when you see them running around or whatever. But I put those two KCs on the front, and that was the first light change I did on mine, and they were great. Uh, I will say I kind of got addicted to the rock light things and put quite a few of those underneath. <laughs> I blame Bill. Comes on here yeah. showing his lights off. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's it's wearing like a right now. Right <laughs> now. <laughs> Gateway rug. It just started. Then you keep buying more and more. Well, I'm glad he. I'm glad he posted about the uh, the the uh, high, uh, KC highlight uh, Cyclone V twos. They are really really bright, and uh, uh, using a magnet to stick them on, which I really really wasn't for. Uh, but the the magnets uh, are, are are really really very very strong. Um, that's what I was I was crawling around underneath the uh, the Gladiator uh, earlier about three four hours ago. I had done up the harnesses and wrapped 20 feet of uh two 20 foot lengths about 20 foot lengths of uh, uh power lines <clears throat> uh, with that cloth tape you know that like they use the factory uses i really like that i i don't particularly care about wrapping it but it's really nice to work with and it's a it feels nice and tough like it's going to be there for a while Anyway, I got those things hooked up. I don't know if you saw the pictures in Discord. And uh, if you, the listener, doesn't uh, don't know about our Discord, we have a Discord server, uh, jeeptalkshow.com uh, slash contact. You can see all the things that you can access uh, with the Jeep Talk Show. And uh, we'd love to have you on there. Uh, if anybody uh, types in fresh meat when you get there, don't be nervous. Just act normal. Uh, I want to I, welcome. Uh, I have that Tesla electric tape in the garage here. And I've got it in a baggie with giant do not use, not athletic tape, do not use written on it. Because yeah, I just know somebody this come first. to the garage. <laughs> yeah. Grab this like, first. <laughs> yeah. I Because I just know somebody's going to come out to the garage because I got black athletic tape and gaffer's tape. And that's by it. And I'm like, somebody's going to grab it thinking it's just like all the rest of the tape and use it. And it's just slightly more than my black athletic tape. So real quick, I want to uh, welcome uh, Larry, uh, John L., uh, Bill from up uh, there in Austin. Chip, Chip's becoming a regular again. Uh, Steve-O, uh, Travis is back with us. Uh, and uh, Bob, two cheap Jeep guys. Roger, Randy, uh, and uh, Matt from Indiana. And uh, Don, Don, I've been uh, wondering about where you've been. I hope, I'm glad to see you back. I know that you were, uh, I saw you uh, online a couple of weeks ago, and I'm uh, glad to see you back on the show. Thanks. Yeah, did, he get skid, did he get the skids installed yet? Uh, I'm going to say uh, no. Give me, <laughs> give, give me a little bit of time. I'm still working on it. I, I got a good reason. <laughs> Yeah, I think I saw a picture of you at the at the firehouse, didn't I, on Facebook or something? Yes, sir. Yeah, I um, uh, I don't know. There was a couple of them. But, uh, last month I hit my twenty five years, um, so a pretty big deal. Twenty five years and um, never started a fire. That's a great award. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 it goes by quick. I'm still young. I'm only 46, but it's really flown yeah. by. So they're not trying to give you a watch and telling you to go home, are they? No, I wouldn't <laughs> take it anyway. They're going to have to wheel me out of there. So. And I don't know if I said uh, said Travis was here. Travis is here. He's got a, a like a whole yeah, paragraph uh, written under his uh, his name uh, for the uh, really? for the Zoom meeting. Travis is eighty nine YJ at fire for the chat with the Jeep. I have no idea what's there. You wrote uh, it when he was fixing. It. Oh, uh, uh, obviously, yeah. I wonder if somebody is uh, messing with you. Anyway, uh, I'll remind everybody. I think we have a few people join while after I mentioned this. Uh, we're just doing kind of a just a, a regular old chat tonight. So uh, uh, don't don't expect uh, other than just jumping in, me jumping in or here occasionally, uh, doing some sh- some show type professional stuff. Uh, we're just uh, having a, a slap fest tonight, really. That's uh. We just set expectations. <laughs> <laughs> it's the type well, you, night that if somebody is cut, jumps in here and uh, they, they're not part of the normal Zoom meetings, we, we wouldn't notice the difference. Nice. I so thought you were at a Smurf convention, Steve-O. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of blue Jeeps. That was a lot of blue Jeeps. We, uh, the National Facebook group, we met up here in a uh, place Chicago. It was a gorgeous day. It was 50 degrees, which... For us, is phenomenal right now. I know for some of you guys, you're running for cover in the garages. But yeah. Jeep Facebook group or what? Yeah, it's called the Blue, Blue Jeep Crew with the KREW. So anyone out there with Blue Jeeps want to join the cool kids? They have a Blue Jeep. Blue Jeep biased, huh? Absolutely. We, we are very Blue Jeep prejudiced. <laughs> Someone with Earl Gray tried to join in. Nope, not happening. Not wow. Blue. Oh, they do. They do let the bikini pearl in, which I'm kind of like, eh, that's not. Cool. But whatever. Not it's my group. Not anything not my but rules. Blue Jeep Club or something. <laughs> it's a crew, not club. We'll let the Earl Gray, Earl Gray guy join. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like the Arizona. They don't allow gladiators and on their trails. Oh well. Uh, 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 Monday, like like colorblind or something. What's going on? Is that why? It's only Blue Jeep. <laughs> Uh, keep it going. I love the hate. Speaking of that, I was going by the Jeep dealership up here where I'm at, and uh, they got a couple, a couple of Jeeps and a couple of gladiators that a gladiator is like a Jeep. A, Damn it! Like it's like a light yellow color. It's not quite that neon yellow that they used to have, but it's almost like uh, like nacho. Like, uh, no, it's almost like a pastel yellow. It's okay. it's a it's a weird color. It's yeah. It's like a the research. high the high tide yellow. Yeah. That, that. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I actually kind of like this. It's like it's it's different. I've never it's seen it in my area. Well, it looks good. I'll tell you what. I got I to be- play with a Grand Wagoneer the other day. <laughs> oh, that thing will ruin you, man. Jesus, fancy. Hey, you can't really. Uh, it's is it the most expensive one now? Still, I mean that new. Uh, well, the AEV anniversary uh, edition <laughs> AEV <laughs> the the AV, Wrangler. Uh, Wrangler uh, might be so, the same price. <laughs> the dealership had to remodel their entire showroom in order to get one. By Chrysler Jeep said, "You this you have to do this if you want one of these. If you want to get them, just I'll think about Jesus. just think about being seventeen, still having drive-in movies, and asking your dad if you could borrow the Grand Wagoneer." Yeah, you could live with that damn thing. Yeah, <laughs> this one was 109 on the showroom floor. I was like, "Holy hell!" Is that before dealer markup? I don't know if they're still uh, doing dealer markup on those. I mean, I know uh, they're trying to move them. I saw. I don't know if you saw, but they did uh, an advertisement for the 2022 new ones that are still out there. Yeah, Chrysler's doing a 1.9 percent APR. Um, you know, yeah, um, you know that adage though they say about buying something the first year model year. With the amount of electronics in that thing, I would. There's no way in hell. I would be like, all about, no. I know all about that. I did that with the with the Tahoe, and it's been. Uh, real <laughs> That's another curse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, just the, the the Macintosh system in them is. I mean, it's, don't get me wrong; it's impressive as all hell. But yeah, there's no way. So the I think I got the wife talked into the Grand Cherokee L, 
hopefully later yeah. this summer. Those are those nice. are sharp. Those are sharp looking. Well, you can get them with the captain seats, third row, and you can still get the Hemi. Yep. Right. You, you, you can get your motor seat. swap on that thing. Take yeah. your white motor out. <laughs> the three six with the three six in the. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, yeah, they, they had a bunch of those. They didn't have any three ninety twos though, Bill. I was looking. I wanted to check one out. And they didn't have any. So yeah, they're kind of hard to come by. That's what they're saying. Yeah. They had one yeah, was that, had, that hyper yellow or something they hit. They said they just sold it. 392, yeah. you kind of need a loud color almost, right? If, if you're not going black, you kind of got to go loud. Well, I would never, never go black to begin with, but. I don't know, black 392 would be pretty nice. Wait, what are you saying? <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying I would never do it. Don't don't read into it unless you, you, you're you feeling uh, self conscious there, Larry. I have a black Jeep. I feel, I feel a single out out there no, you the, the black <laughs> i've got two jeep. black jeeps i think yeah. black jeeps look the absolute best cleaned up but i Absolutely. think they get dirtier quicker than anything oh don't get me wrong it's yeah. just filthy i had a 93 driving. i agree with you travis i had a 93 ford ranger on a summer night after she was washed wax it was beautiful a day and a half not even a day later yeah. it's, it's it's trashed yeah it's, it, it's, i mean they look amazing but yeah, they're they're dirty. You have to keep them clean. Or me, it's a Jeep. I don't care if it's clean. I'm like, ah, it is what it is. We don't yeah. get to join any of those clubs, right? Because it depends on what sunlight is, is what color mine is. <laughs> well, I went. Mean, Larry, Larry thought mine was black for the longest time, and he even went I blue. And thought it was black, and then sometimes it looks blue, sometimes it's just gray. So, so your Jeep's transitioning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's trans jeep <laughs> it's a trans oh there we go what the hell <laughs> and now larry to your comment about being singled out it's valentine's day and we're all on here what does that say well i'm okay. out of town i don't know what your excuse is <laughs> i am very disappointed in all of you every one of you <laughs> phone was in the garage muted i couldn't get here fast enough but really nobody once you go black, you don't go back. Nobody said it. I can't believe you guys. That's it's like I don't even know you guys anymore. That, that is a not. valid point. My first Jeep originally was an 89 red YJ, and I did switch it to the black. And I've gone black ever since. So what's your, what's your guys' next mods? <laughs> uh, steer smarts, drag link, tie rod, and dampener. In theory. <laughs> Did you want me to order it? No, because the person I'm going to order it through, I got a text from him. He's, uh, and I'm obviously I don't want to say name online because I don't know how he feels about it, but he is laid up pretty hard with the COVID. Mm, that's not good. No. So he te he finally texted me saying he'd been in bed for a week. Um, I, I didn't put it in Discord because obviously I, I don't know where what his comfort level is with that information, but that's why I'm not naming names, but you know what it is. I just put uh, seven inch wide fender flares on mine. Why? Because I got tired of having mud all over and in my Jeep when I had the top off. I got to get wider, mender, wider metal or fender flares for mine. I'm just getting tired of the, the rooster tails out of the front tires. I come home and on the TJ, the two outside vents just line up perfectly with these tires. And I've got to take the vent apart to get the mud out of it. It literally launches the mud into the vent. Well, I just hate when I go to the car wash and I wash it, and it's all nice and clean. And if I leave too quick and drive through a water puddle yep. and yep, turn yep, yep, the yep, wheel yep. just a little bit, freaking rooster tails on this all over the side of the Jeep. It's like, you know what? I'm just going to get wider fender flares. Yeah. I hate my water puddles. And, uh, you know, the other thing I hate is... Uh, they don't aim the um, uh, the sprinklers like if you have a little bit of subdivision. They don't aim those sprinklers very well, so you you roll into the subdivision on a nice day that you've actually cleaned things. You know, I don't. I think I've washed the Gladiator once since I've had it. Oh no, I'm washing it twice a week when the Chicago when they're laying the salt down. Oh yeah, I yeah, guess so. Cool. More for the undercarriage than anything else, but I've got that. I barely get pass. to drive it. I barely get to drive it once a week, so yeah. I usually wash it every other week. <laughs> you know, you know, stuff mine every once in a while. 
Larry, I'm going to buy some uh, socks so I can put those plates on. You'd be surprised yeah. how easy it's. Sure. It, two bolts, all you can do is take take them loose and put the put the new bolts well, in there. Yeah, I had a uh, spacer lift, and and on the back they uh, they put the brackets like I think where it either raises the the shock bolt up or down, and the uh, with that bracket that they put it it was too wide for it to fit on there. Okay, so well that makes sense. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, uh, I'll probably get a little bit bigger lift and maybe some bigger tires. That's and always a good plan. Absolutely. <laughs> I've got lights. I got a technical question for you guys. So Saturday, I'm driving my wife's JKU, and I had a misfire on cylinder three. And I stopped by AutoZone, and they ran the scan code, and they said misfire, and it also said an inject injection the number three injector was stuck open. Hmm. Have you guys had any injector issues on the 3.6? Uh, no, I haven't. I know the 3.6 on the um, JK is different than the one on the JL. Yeah. Apparently significantly. Um, I know the cylinder misfire, though, is a common one, though. I mean, I, I've read a lot about cylinder misfire codes. I've read about it on uh, the the uh, four point not so much the three six. Are you talking about the three six? You you've heard about it? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, how many what miles kind of, on the chip? What's nine uh, eighty seven thousand? What kind yeah. of fuel you so run? She runs eighty seven octane, the cheap cheapest she can get. I mean, I mean, you're you're probably about due anyway for some new coil packs. But if so, you're having that, if you're having a continuous on that cylinder one. Move three, that coil three. pack. Or so three, 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 three. Coil so. pack. Move it to another cylinder and see if it follows it. Okay. So, and that way so you, you can rule out if it's a coil pack or not. The, yeah. the, thing, the reason why I was talking about it, I've heard of it, so I just did like a quick Google search and put 3.6 liter Pentastar and it and followed it. Misfire cylinder three. It did. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's apparently common. It was really common in the Rams, apparently. Just doing the quick search on there, I, I know I've read it. May have been. I thought it started on Wrangler form too. I WJ exactly what you're saying, Larry. They they said the uh, normal swap coils with another cylinder and see if the problem follows it. Like that's the yeah. interesting. Well, I was going to throw plugs in it and I'm looking at coils too because the coil pack comes with it and. And then possibly do a new injector on cylinder three and see if that affects it. Is it vibrating? Yeah, I, I would just suggest moving that coil back first before you go through everything. Right. And that way you that way you know what it is. Yeah, right. you throw the kitchen sink at it and you have no idea what fixed it. Well, true. But so the somebody asked, does it vibrate? A little bit. I mean it's not terrible, <coughs> but I felt a little bit I felt more vibration than normal, yes. The only way we ran out of quarters. <laughs> well, here's the bad news is so we were at a stoplight. So my wife my wife babies are Jeep, right? So we're at a stoplight and I'm driving and there's a little Ford courier pickup truck next to me that doesn't have an exhaust. And he takes off and he's trying to beat me off the stop off the green light. I'm like, the hell you will. So I, I gave it some gas. Now I didn't mash it to the floor, but I pulled away from him. And then all of a sudden the check engine lights comes on and this damn misfire happens. And then she's like, you broke my Jeep. Oh, this is hers, not yours. Oh. Yeah. Well, so oh. this is the first, I mean, this is, so we've had the Jeep for what, four years now, her Jeep. And I've had my Jeep for almost four years and never had any issues. So now here's the first, first time we've had anything. So. I thought they were more bulletproof. I was hoping they were, but if this is all it is, then that's no big deal. So, Did, didn't you ever hear that nothing good comes from watch this? I know oh, I've done dear. that before. You, I had that happen to me one night. I was out late, and there were a few Coronas involved, and a guy <laughs> was trying. How, we were, how, how does Coronas lead to mischief? Well, <laughs> drinks of them real. We, when you're going 80 mile an hour down an alley that's got <laughs> potholes and you frag your oil pan in a BMW, it was her BMW. It was not good. Oh, so what you're saying is, what you're saying is you have a bad record record with your wife's cars. 
and Coronas. Okay. What he's saying is he's smart enough to do things in his wife car, car or Jeep, <laughs> not his own. <laughs> I'll give him that. Uh, be like, honey, I'm going out drinking, taking your car. See ya. Oh, shit. No, it's good. Yeah, it, looks like, it looks like they, the, uh, you know, there's all kinds of possibles. Everybody's throwing out there like cylinder head. If there's a vibration, a tick comes along with the error code, then a lot of people are saying it's actually the, the cylinder head. That's that's part oh. of the problem. Uh, no, like no he tried to cheer him up. Well, no, I just point out that's why I asked about the the vibration. But yeah, the tick is the telltale sign. Without that, it, it, most of them have the same thing. Like Larry said, move the pack around and see if it if it follows. Um, that's the most common diagnosis model. All right, or you could just hemi swap it. <laughs> See, that was what's in my mind. I was so I drove it home an hour because I was hoping yeah. I'd just blow the damn engine and then put AM in it. <sighs> and then you could tell her, "Look, hun, I know you're without a car. Take mine." Right. Well, she's and driving I'll, mine right I'll now. Get, I'll, I'll get this one running. Yeah, and I come home with a hemi. It's a great idea. Yeah. I love the plan. And chances are, she's going to like the other one so much, you can just uh, say, "Hey, well, let's just uh, let's just keep the the jeeps that we're driving." But when she says you're driving the other one that she li- that you have, is she driving your Willys? No, what I'm thinking, no, no, of course not. Of course not. You're on a Zoom call on Valentine's. So <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. So she's driving my 14 JK. But Tony, that's a bad idea. I'd, so what I'm really thinking, what what went through my mind was, I'd pull the three six out of my JK. Put it in her JKU, Gee, and then I'd have to put the Hemi in my JK. You sound like Bill when you get a couple of free weekends. He's going to take all the parts off of his old Jeep, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, just because. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are you? What are you wiring up, Bill? You said more lights. What are you wiring up? Uh, just light bar. Where are you gonna put it? Uh, it's gonna go right above. It's on the. Still bumper right above the uh, the winch, barely. So, do you know if you put that on the back, you can call it a tail gunner? <laughs> yeah. But you need a lot bigger light. Yeah. You just need to make the switch an actual trigger then. Yeah, I just want to be able to go down the, <laughs> the trail and, and turn on my lights, but have the light hit the trail and not blind the, the per- poor person in front of me. I have some of like tiny lights. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I can already see everybody. All you three are going to be fighting for who's going to be the one in front so you can turn all the lights on. Oh, Tony's going to be in front with those Tyree lights. I'm not getting, <laughs> I'm not getting in front of them. Well, you know what I call those uh, super bright lights in the front, and when you have a bunch of them, I call them sterilizers. It keeps right. pe- keeps them from uh, dumb people from uh, 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 creating more dumb people. <laughs> Don't drink and procreate. <laughs> well, there would be no kids. <laughs> I'm anxious to see uh, see how bright those things are this weekend. So. I need to have a look at it, but I have a, a a light meter. I have a little device that will measure the brightness of the light. We may have to. Oh yeah, bring it. Yeah. Instead of using the um, uh, the tape measure uh, for measuring things, we can use the the how bright is the light. Have a luminoff. Uh huh. A luminoff. <laughs> sounds sounds Russian. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of something like a hey, Russian. It is what it is. Well, that and Tony, you've got lights around the vehicle now as well. The drone above it. If you've got night flying, just that overhead shot in the area. Like my old Jeep, I've got lights shooting in every which direction because again, it's not always straight ahead that you need to see night wheeling. Um, and it's I, I, I like rock lights. I like lights underneath. And I've always wanted my drone won't fly at night, and I can't do an overhead shot just to see how much light I'm truly putting off. I've I've got it going up a trail in Uari, and it just impressed me on the rear lights. And great, that's fantastic when I was, you know, getting pulled out from being in two-wheel drive up a trail. But, you know, the side shooting and everything else, I'm like, get make sure you get footage of that as well. Um, Andrew's supposed to be coming out uh, for uh, to get a little, some uh, some overhead night shots, some B roll type stuff, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm hoping that that will uh, that will show up very well with uh, with the, the side lights, the KC lights, I should so, say. 
you guys all got all these lights and everything. We used to wire one light dead center back just a little below the bunker to shine right in front of us. Don't you guys worry about the farmer whose field you're in or the cops or the girl who's you're with her parents finding you with all those lights? Hmm. Sound like I've got a kill switch and I can run the amber only in the front. <laughs> Bob, it sounds like you've got some experience with this. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up in a small town in South Dakota. Bob, was she 18? <laughs> oh, what boy. the fake yes. driver's license said. <laughs> in the town I grew up in, that didn't matter. She lived, in <laughs> she still lived under her parents' rules. And, and, it's, her and nothing matters on both sides, of pro and con, depending on who you are. So... Uh, being shot and buried is uh, is accepted. <laughs> so if the one isn't good, time becomes a quick op, the quick uh, product there. Yeah. <laughs> you don't talk about guns. I'm I'm in East Lansing tonight. Is that a bad place to be? Did you hear about the shootings that went on up here? Yeah, MSU. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right, MSU. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm supposed to meet a professor tomorrow over here to talk about some research and. They said, well, we can't meet on campus. We have to meet off campus because campus is closed. Well, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, it's just happened. Yeah, just tell them you're okay, that you're armed. You're ready to go. <laughs> well, hell yeah. That's, I, I mean, I brought a, you got it. Yeah. It's, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Is that a gun-free zone? The campus is up there? Uh, usually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But still, the, but still he, he bring a gun wrong. to a knife fight. I mean, always you always want to overkill. Well, this wasn't so even a student, was it? Some no, he's a forty-three. Old. The forty-three-year-old, I don't know why yet, but but yeah, I, I mean, he broke the law by bringing a gun into a gun-free zone. Oh, so good lord! How? Where does the country come in? To, you know, yeah. it's just, oh my, that's just uh, unbelievable. <laughs> I wonder if they're ever, ever going to outlaw stupidity. <laughs> oh God! Did you see the uh, the Jeep commercial? Anybody? Just you said stupidity, and it made me think about it. <laughs> I probably would have to watch the uh, Super Bowl, and I, I didn't yeah. even know it was happening. Thank God. But the four by E, yeah, were they were like, all over the place. yeah, they were like dancing and driving along, and they come by little forest creatures that were also dancing, and they push yeah. a button, to make it go electric, and and plug it in in the middle of the wilderness. It's like, hey, where's that charger connected to? <laughs> to that big coal plant right down the street. <laughs> I was watching it, watching it for a little while, and I was like, what the hell am I watching right now? That would be it's so a, funny, where they switch to the coal the plant, and they're taking the little woodling creatures and throwing them in there for, for fuel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you get stuck in a mud hole, you need traction. <laughs> throw a creature under the tire. Well, I mean, it goes back to that whole stupidity thing. And I can throw a chipmunk under my... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it goes back to the whole stupidity thing. People don't think it through. I mean, I still think it's fake, but that news thing where that uh, little uh, news blurb or whatever it was about the, the lady that wrote in saying you people quit, quit killing animals, just go to the store and buy your food. Uh, it's just, you know, but I think there's people out there that either convince themselves there's a, uh, that, you know, the, the nuts and bolts still aren't necessary. You know what? Stupidity is as stupid does. Or said it right. There was a Move group your deer of, crossing fun. There was a Sorry. group of girls up here went on a river leave. rafting trip. They called the sheriff because they couldn't figure out why they didn't end where they finished where they started. Huh. <laughs> I yeah, mean you, you you just, on, on yeah. the lazy river it does that on the lazy river they were used to. This was on the Muskegon River up in Michigan. <laughs> the so, lazy river. Yeah. <laughs> well, river works. <laughs> I come all the way back around, right where I was. Yeah, they they were used to sheriff. going up to the Dells and riding the Lazy River yeah. all day long. Yeah. Now, right. I, can't get out of, I can't get my fat ass out of the tube, but. <laughs> well, because they eat deep fried Twinkies in Wisconsin. Oh, so you God bless them. The commercials, Super Bowl commercial. What do you think about premature electrification? <laughs> that one was funny. Like, I'm not a fan of, of electric trucks or anything, but that one. That, that one was good. good. That one was good. It was a Ram commercial, wasn't it? It was a Ram yeah. commercial, and I think what they're trying to do, they're not out till what, 2024, so they're, part of the subliminal of that is don't have premature electrification, wait till this truck comes out, right? Yeah. Just no yeah. charge for more than four hours at a time. <laughs> <laughs> We're behind. Please wait for us to catch up. 
2024 is not long enough to wait for electric vehicles. You're going to have to wait uh, at least another 10 years. But have you guys noticed that on the ads for the electric cars, I forget who it was that had it on, but they were talking about how, you know, there's growing pains and, you know, they're maybe not for everybody. They're starting to do the, the, the conditioning, if you will, so that to build a back out of it if they want to. Well, well, the funniest one was Dorman's, right? The Dorman guy or the foundation or whatever. And what's really funny about it, I find, is that you can't find it anywhere on all the compilations of the Super Bowl ads. But the Dorman Foundation put out an anti-Tesla ad for the uh, the um, oh, is this a stroller driving or whatever. And when you look out there, like my daughter thought it was funny because it was like running over mannequins and doing all kinds of other crazy stuff, and couldn't find it anywhere on YouTube. The only thing you can find it on YouTube is people that are, you know, pointing out anything wrong with it or whatever. Which, like, I so so yeah, I'm, the gasoline I'm the one. Go ahead, I'm the one currently. I'm the one currently here that has the hybrid 4XEG, and I'm going to tell you, I absolutely love it. Now, everything I read, everything I see, my weather is conditioned for that vehicle perfect. If you're cold climate, there's so many different scenarios. Again, if you're driving, how far you're driving, what you're doing, what's going on, it's not a good vehicle whatsoever. I say it's not a good vehicle. It's a Jeep. You know, they sell it as this hybrid, great gas mileage, everything good. And the reality of it is, if you're making any kind of road trip, if you're making any kind of distance whatsoever, that drops significantly. And if you're not taking your charger to charge it, if you're not doing certain scenarios, is it stupid in power? Yeah. Do I own a sports car that looks like a Jeep? Yes, I do. You know, I'm, I've am i yet to have that Jeep off-road between, you know, you already shutting down. I've yet to take it out. In March, there's Jeep-tastic. Y'all are all invited. Come out to Jeep-tastic. It's going to be a good event. And it's going to be out there, and I'm going to go wheel it. That's in March. I don't know. It's, it's coming up next month. But what is um, Jeep Tastic? It's uh, a big. It's a zoo that basically is putting on a event, and they did it last year. It was great. It was before I bought my Jeep and my YJ. Imagine this was broke down. I took a work Jeep and I went to the park and had a blast. Actually, I was out there with Nikki G. Me and him so met up and went to it. Were they going to put like a tiger in your Jeep or what? Are they, what, what <laughs> how's that work? It was me. I, I took a JK. I took a 18 JK from work that was lifted up, just traded in, um, and had a blast on the trails. Is Absolute it trans Jeep friendly? It was trans Jeep friendly. Yeah. There you go, John. <laughs> yep. You're ch- color changing. You can come. But right, so that's, cool, that's an event we've got in March. But I'm going to take my 4XE and hit the trails and see what it does. Because they build the trails. They, and it's, it's large. It's not like a little uh, Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam or Daytona where it's very confined. It's a very large property that they build great trails in. So I'm going to take the 4XE and hit the trails on the first time. Then I'll be able to fully say, yes, the power is amazing. The power is great. And what it can do. You know, my daily driving of it, fantastic. Can I drive to the grocery store and back 100% free on just a dollar charge? Yep, can do it. How long have you uh, had the, the 4 by e now, Travis? I've had it since May, uh, March of last year. So I'm coming up on a year on it. And I've had zero issues whatsoever. Right. Not no, one. I would expect you not to have any issues with it other than the, the, well, built, the built-in issues like the, the, uh, the range on electric. Um, but, I, well, but I'll be interested in hearing. Yeah, I'll be interested in hearing what that. you got five years into it, and uh, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand miles. You say zero issues, so I sold my uh, Katie, my ex's sister. I sold her one within four months. She had it in the shop for over a month at a time. Identical Jeep, identical Rubicon. It was in the shop. I read again. You're always going to read the negative. Um, everyone in the world, they're going to post their negative. And, you know, I've got a buddy that's got a 21. That's why he went from a YJ. He still got his YJ like I do and went to the 21 4XE. Hasn't had any issues. Uh, I thought it was all weather related and different scenarios. But my sister, ex-sister-in-law 
you know, she had one or a, one I sold her and it was in the shop left and right. Um, there are a lot of issues, but they're working them out. You know, if I can order the 20th anniversary, I've got my dealership looking at, you know, me trading in a 22 Compass and a 22 4XE, and I'll get a 20th anniversary Rubicon 4XE because the 392 still is above my price range. So I just make, 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 make sure I'm clear. I don't want it, there to be any problems with anybody's Jeep. I just don't think um, that singing the praises after uh, only having a, a, a 4 bay e for less than a year <laughs> is i would expect it to to be good for a year for two years maybe even three and then maybe some minor minor issues um and there's always going to be those situations where people buy something and it just doesn't it, it was made wrong it's a friday or a monday vehicle or something you know so uh but uh, as far as the the complexity and the the battery longevity and all that stuff i think it's going to take take longer to find out if if it was a, a great purchase or not but yeah i mean if you're if you're only getting a vehicle for a couple of years or three years max and, and buying something new i'm sure it'll be fine right and that that's you know my yj is my heart and soul that's that's my jeep um this one is my daily driver you know similar similar to you even though i mean you you don't drive your x day like i don't drive my yj you know it's broke down every other day something's going on if i had the choice i would 100 percent daily drive the yj but the reality of it is i've got more issues that i can care to share and it is what it is but the gas gauge works now which is really cool it does work yes i've i've got everything fixed except for the transmission and i told that guy hey money's a little tight <laughs> let's put you on hold no rush were you putting an aw4 in it i can't remember it was an aw4 oh it was okay yeah how many miles yeah. it was on that the two two something uh, it was the original so it was over three Okay. Well, yeah. There's or, that, that's the good. Original, yeah. The that, original transmission was that, in it. That's that's good. Good timing. But I didn't think the YJs came with an ADA before. It, no. 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 That was the original transmission that came in it. Yes. And you're going. Um. It did not come. Yes. And I'm you're going, going in with an AW4. AW4 is a yes. great transmission. I hope so. I. I don't know about yeah. yours, but just in general. Right. So I mean that's that's I'm hoping to upgrade that. I mean I've upgraded the engine already with converters to get everything to work right. Um, I should have gone to a much larger engine than what I did, but when I started the rebuild, I was kind of a broke kid and went cheaper routes, which were very expensive. And now, like ah, I should have done it a different way, but I'm going to be happy. I've got a straight six in there, you know, four cylinder straight six, added fuel injection, pulled the carbureted engine. Uh, just because heels, inclines, different things of that nature. I love a carburetor, but off-road, I did truly see it affect different scenarios. So Yeah, I imagine yeah, so. Yeah, hoping it, hoping it works out. Nose up, nose down. Uh, hey, yeah. Bill, uh, I don't know how we got off of uh, off of uh, rock lights, but uh, let me ask you something. <laughs> how many how many of those uh, KC lights uh, Cyclone V twos do you have on yours? Because I'm I'm looking at the what is it six seven eight that I've got on mine. I'm thinking, you know, I think I need a couple more. <laughs> Two, four, six, eight, and twelve. There we go. Okay, so that's twelve rock lights, Bill. How many you got the light bar and and, and you got some side lights here, don't you? Little, yeah, little so I have two of the uh, Gravity Pro lights facing forward, and then I swapped out the um, fog lights with the KC. I think what is it like ER threes nice. or something? They have like a high and a low beam, so they're kind of nice because they the low beam ties into the the stock fog wiring. And then you can oh. add a 12 volt source that I have on an aux switch that'll do like a, a spot, like a, a spot beam that'll that'll pop up on those. So you kind of have like two power levels for the, the fog light location. And then I'm adding this 10 inch uh, Baja Designs light and it's kind of a combo wide slash spot. So enough, I guess. <laughs> um, 
So uh, had you, I can't remember. Did, did you have them all on there when we were when we did the Night Willing event about last uh, last June? I did not. I had the. I was running the the Lux lights at that time. Okay, well so. those those did a pretty good job. But the 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 KC two, uh, or sorry, the KC Cyclone V twos are, are brighter, right? Yeah, for sure. Yep. And somebody got a, a cyclone. The original one was it you, John? Yeah, I picked it up at a look at the, one of those Black Friday sales at Pool Parts. I walked in just to see what they had, and they had like two old V ones just sitting there on the shelf they couldn't sell. And I think it was like fifteen bucks for both of them together. They oh, sold that's, them. So, that's a good price compared to the new ones. But I've got those, those interior lights, so they work great for like I, I put the there was a blue one and an amber one, and so I put the the blue one in the back. So illuminates up the whole back when I open up the back door and all that kind of stuff, pretty good light. And then uh, I haven't figured out where to put the amber. I've actually got two clear and two and one amber left to put underneath the Jeep. But right now I've got six, seven, I think seven underneath the Jeep of the Cyclone V2s. And it puts out a, a ton of light. I mean, you could see the uh, YouTube video Bill put out from last time we went night wheeling and falls with him. And I was... I was pretty happy with it, so I don't know. I haven't decided where I'm going to put the other ones I got yet. So one for, under the hood. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not bad. Yeah. yeah. So I know this will be a question for some of our listeners. What I mean, the lights obviously are are cool looking and uh, a little different than what you'd see on just a, an everyday Jeep. Um, but are they useful on the trail? Oh yeah. So you yeah. remember the at the event there was that obstacle that V notch at the very end of that night wheeling trip that we went to uh-huh. uh, so the last time we went out there at night wheeling i i went up at first and then bill was going up and he kept kind of getting hung up in this one little area and the rock lights were so bright i mean you could see everything underneath what he was getting hung up on and then to stack rocks underneath there you could kind of figure out where you need to put them and everything else i mean it gave us a ton of visibility underneath there to be able to, to help i mean in reality i think the biggest person that helps is whoever's spotting you or whoever's out there, you know, wheeling with you, you know, can give you better advice if they're, if they're able to see more. So inside, um, you know, if I'm kind of slowly going up on an undercut ledge or something like that, and I'm kind of looking out the window to see where my, my tires, where I want it to be or whatever, then they're very helpful there as well. Cause you can, you so can you don't have lot. to be outside the vehicle to be, for them to be of use. You can be inside the vehicle and oh, yeah. uh, it makes it uh, better for you to see what what the obstacle is oh yeah so it helps you it helps the spotter i think and they're not you know they're not pointed at the spotter or they're not pointed at your face or right. somewhere <laughs> so it, it it really much more useful i found than having you know uh ufo ring of lights around you or whatever or, you know on the trail or whatever so yeah it's, um, it's funny when uh, bill said he had uh, 12 uh, of those uh, rock lights on there i thought about well you could have a ufo off you just get get, get the ufo to come by and visit and then you could uh, you know play some music get a crowd <laughs> well i think the uh, the ones he's putting on there now especially that amber one down there because when i was when we were out there i was up front i could use my i got the gravity pro on the front bumper as well and they were great they throw the light way off i was able to see that with the factory led headlights worked perfectly but bill couldn't turn his on and because if he did he would you know be blinding me up front or whatever so the bar he's putting on there to kind of aim down on that i'm i'm interested to see how that changes it oh and bill i don't know if you're up for this i figured you would be i kind of figured it would be uh neat that when we're uh doing the uh the night run uh, this coming saturday uh, to get your Jeep in there too with your lights and kind of oh, yeah. kind of do a comparison between the two, especially with the uh, the the KC Gravities. What uh, uh, if if somebody doesn't mind mention? I mean, I have to look it up, but I'm just kind of curious for the listener. Um, know what, what the price is on the the gravity uh, the gravity lights that you guys are using? Now, this isn't the light bar; these are individual lights, or maybe they came in pairs. I don't know. They come in pairs. I think my, the ones I bought, I think were around four fifty or something. I think from I got mine on sale on there. I think I paid like three something, but it, I think does, it was around Christmas or something. Does anybody remember the lumens? The advertised lumens? Oh. Nah, I have to look it up. Yeah, I can look it up. I was just curious. But I, the one thing about the Gravity Pros I really like is, you know, they're not as slim as their Slimline series, but they're, they're still pretty slim. They're compact. So there's not a lot of big heat sink behind them and everything else. I mean, they're pretty, you know, they're pretty compact. So 
when you put them on the front pump or you put them in front of your winch, whatever, and you know you, you've got a lot lot better clearance. Right. Well, I mean, you're talking about rock lights and lights in general, and it, to me, I've always preferred lights everywhere but directly ahead, unless I'm leading the trail. You know, Bill, Bill with his 392, he's leading the trail. He needs lights up front to see, <laughs> but then his lights underneath actually help everyone behind him. You know, if you're behind, once if you're not the leader, you don't need all the light. You don't need a light bar. You don't need this. You don't need that. You truly well, don't. I need would, I would, I would disagree. Yeah, because we get a lot of dust down here, and so a lot of times you're running the lights just so that you know you, you, people have visibility of of your vehicle. Is that lower amber light? Because again, a light bar, you know, when I run through snow, like I, I don't have the dust scenario. I've got snow occasionally or rain or anything but dust. I don't have dust. So no, I can run like an amber, amber light. light. Yeah, run, run like amber yeah. light for the yellow. And I can cut through it, yeah. but it's not blinding the person in front well, of me. But I would, the, the, the reason why I said I would disagree is because. Like at Hidden Falls, there's a lot of elevation changes out there and obstacles. And as most places you go wheeling or whatever, and I, I'm leading, per se, like last time, and I can see the obstacles. I'm running my lights. I climb over it and I get up. Well, there's now some distance. Bill is about to tap at the obstacle, and as much light as he can get to see everything on that obstacle to know where he wants, what line he wants to pick, and everything else, you know, he can turn that on to do it. So just driving down the trail, you're right. You know, you're probably not going to be running all those forward-facing lights if you're not up front. But once you get to that obstacle, having those forward-facing lights helps a lot. It illuminates everything so you can get up that obstacle. And that's even if you're not in, in the front. And I think if somebody is in the front, they see that you're trying to get up that obstacle, they're not going to have a problem with you running your forward lights. Right. And, and, and again, that's distance and where you're at, where you're riding, what you're – yeah. You know, because I'm, I'm – I don't want to say I'm, I'm tailgating because I'm definitely far back enough and give myself distance to anybody I'm trailing, but I'm watching that line. My headlights alone, again, are upgraded. You know, my fog lights alone are upgraded. You know, my YJ, I've got lights for days on the front of that. I will never, ever lead the, the pack, ever. Now, granted, I can light up the world around it, but – underneath in what I'm stuck on, where I'm at, helping the person behind me. I've got rear lights, side lights, everything. But you're also you know, not going to be out on the trail only trail riding, right? Because if you pull up into camp, you got to set up yeah. camp at night, and you want to you wanna throw some light out to figure out where you're going to put your tent at and you know get all that set up. There's a lot of uses for them. So I, right. I, I think that they're, they're still very valid to have up there. I think it's just – well, this is uh, not an unusual conversation that we have here on the uh, the Zoom meeting every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central Time. If uh, if you'd like to join us, you're more than welcome to to come in, and uh, you can come here every week. Uh, if uh, we we have um, how, how can I say this? We, it's not every other week that we have a guest question and answer, but uh, if uh, if we have a quest a guest question and answer. Then the very next week will be just a, a conversation similar to this. We normally have uh, have questions that we'll ask and, and get everybody uh, kind of a, a format that we can follow and uh, follow along and uh, have a question and have answers from our our Zoom people, our our Zoom panel. So uh, you can either uh, happen in on a a guest question and answer like we did with uh, Tom Zelensky of Four Fest Events and uh, Jim Morrison of uh, Jeep North America. We had them on for. A, a Q and A. Uh, I think it was back in September. So you never know. Uh, you may uh, uh, happen upon a guest, and of course, you'll find out about these if you join our newsletter. So if you go to jeeptalkshow.com/contact, scroll on down and see where you can join our newsletter. You, then you will get at least a uh, uh, a day's notice, uh, if not uh, more, uh, of uh, having a, a guest on that you might want to connect with. So we're here every week, four times a week, and uh, I, I, th I think if you if you've been here for a while, you know this. But if you're brand new, you may not. Uh, you may think it's a Zoom meeting four times a week. No, 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 no. Uh, we have uh, what we call the flagship episode, the the show that we've been doing, or similar to the show we've been doing, uh, going on 13 years now. We have uh, two of those flagship episodes. They are on Tuesdays and Thursday. 
And then our Wednesday episode is our roundtable conversation that we record on Tuesday. And uh, the uh, the interviews that we had uh, been doing uh, for a, a while uh, prior to splitting them out to their own episode, um, they are on Friday. So interview episodes on Friday. And the great thing is, is that since the uh, the interview episode is a standalone, it's a you know just one. It's just the interview for for Friday. We have a much longer interview that can go uh, upwards of an hour. So it is four days of listening to the Jeep Talk Show uh, and and different types of shows, but always about Jeeps. Well, we have some side conversations on occasion, but the majority of it is is, is related to Jeeps. So uh, if you've just found us, welcome. I think that you're going to have a, a really good time here. We try to give a little something to everybody. Uh, we are off-road focused. Uh, as you heard us talking about lights tonight, uh, we, we love our lights. We love our lifts. We love uh, the big tires. So uh, it's, it's very off-road uh, centric. And uh, the cool thing about being part of the Zoom room, the conversation doesn't start. They're still talking, and uh, they're still having a good time talking about uh, Jeeps and what they do with them. So uh, the uh, the Zoom room meeting can go on for uh, an hour, an hour and a half after we finish up the show. So that's another good reason to join the Zoom meeting. You don't have to talk. You can just listen. But I bet you're going to jump in with your two cents worth. It's hard to stay out of the conversation. It's a lot of fun. Uh, nobody shuts you down. It's just a, a good uh, group of uh, guys. And, uh, you know, we'd like for you to join. Broadcasting since 2010.